Severe drought has left millions of people in Somalia in dire need of food and medical assistance. Aid agencies warn children are most at risk. Mohamed Youssef reports from Baidoa, Somalia, on the impact of this crisis on future generations. Most of the children in this primary school arrived in Baidoa recently, displaced by the severe drought gripping Somalia. Seven-year-old Abdi Hassan is an orphan. He lives in a nearby IDP camp with his grandmother. He struggles with his lessons. The teachers say he comes to school hungry. They say he's not the only one. Ambiya Mohammed Dahir attended this school as a child and has taught here for 25 years. She says they need a school feeding program. A malnourished child cannot remember what he was taught in class. If he's asked a question about last class, he cannot remember it, and that is because of lack of food. You have to keep repeating the same lessons over and over again due to the lack of good memory. Aid agencies say more than 270,000 school-aged children have been displaced. The UN Children's Fund says the drought has forced 40,000 children out of school. The drought has triple impact. So the drought disease and displacement is what is impacting children. So the drought affects the family and it could lead to acute watery diarrhea or children you know, becoming malnourished and wanting, needing more help. And for more now on the deteriorating conditions in the region, we are joined on Skype from Nairobi, Kenya, by VOA Africa correspondent Mohamed Youssef, who filed that report you just heard. Welcome back. And here in Washington by VOA Somali service reporter Abdulaziz Osman. I thank both of you gentlemen for joining us. Mohammed, uh, let me talk to you first. Good report, by the way. You know, there's a saying that a hungry mind cannot be filled on an empty stomach. So not only has drought seemed to have robbed the country of food, now it also appears to be robbing the children of their right to an education. Is that essentially what's going on? Yes, indeed. And uh, that's a big problem now. And many children cannot go to school. We understand, according to the aid agencies so far, about 700,000 people have been displaced and 300,000 of them are children. And UNICEF is saying that about 80,000 children are out of school. And a month ago, while we were there um, in the first week of May, the numbers were 40,000 a month back now we're talking of 80,000 and you clearly see how the situation is deteriorating and many children cannot go to school and while you are there in every if you go to IDP camp you children is filled by is filled with children you go to the um, nutrition centers filled with children any areas you tend to go in Somalia filled with children clearly shows that the impact it had on them and of course their mothers are with them but children a big uh, are affected mostly. Right. Abdulaziz, uh, you cover this for the Somali service. Is this an issue that worries you? The fact that uh, so many, the future generation is, is sort of at risk as a result of this famine. Is that something that that is worrisome? Yes, actually, yes. Because uh, not only I am covering for the Somali service. I was there. I I was there in Somalia in March, uh, northern Somalia, the breakaway region of Somaliland, where I have seen. Mm -hmm. uh, myself, how the, the scale of the drought and how it's impacting the whole community, especially the nomadic community in, in Somaliland, where they lost more than 80 percent of their of the livestock they had. So it's really huge, uh, thin in Somalia, and it's creating a lot of problems, not only for the children, even for the adults. Is is the country receiving enough help? From the international community? The UN agencies or the aid agencies have uh, a bill $1.5 billion and so far according to the aid agencies they said they received $539 million. So somehow aid is getting, is getting through there and this week alone the World Bank has approved $50 million in drought response Somalia. So we right. could say there is a limited aid agents coming through to Somalia. Mohammed, uh, you know, Somalia, uh, uh, as you know, is not the only country uh, at risk at this stage. There are also uh, other countries in the region that are also in danger of famine. How many people altogether are considered uh, at risk in those other countries or in that region near the Cape of Africa, near the Horn of Africa? At the beginning of the crisis, uh 
earlier this earlier this year, the number were about 17,000, but the numbers might have gone up. And we understand so far, for example, for Somalia, the first time that was announced was 6.2 million people are affected, mm -hmm. almost half of the population. Now is about 7 million. And the number of displaced still growing 600 two weeks ago. Now we're talking of 700,000 people. Wow. And, and the number wow. is going, is really, really going up. And this, all these countries that the has been hit by humanitarian crisis. They share one thing in common is, is conflict. And you've talked of northern Nigeria, Yemen, Somalia. The big problem is conflict. And you, even if you have aid assistance, if you you want to help, it's really hard to provide that assistance and give get right. to people as soon as you can. That is also a, a big challenge. And one thing they really share in common is, is a conflict. Abdulaziz, I want you to expand on, on what Mohammed said there. I, I guess I, I guess part of the problem here, that what makes the situation even more worse, is that conflict is making uh, it more difficult, actually, or creating worse conditions for the people who live in those areas. That's correct, and uh, especially in the southern Somalia, where you have the militant al-Shabaab who are blockading a certain area controlled by the Somali government or, or Amazon uh, troops. So it's very hard... Uh, for aid agents to get access to this area. So it's actually making things very worse. Right. And, and, and Mohammed, is the Somalia government uh, effective at all in, in uh, creating avenues for help for some of these affected uh, uh, folks? I think there's a progress compared to last time in 2011-2012 funding. And now there's more government-controlled areas. And for example, in Baidar wasn't one of the areas that was liberated at the time. Now many people can come in. And actually, Baidar is, is one of the biggest places. About 150,000 people have, have walked to Baidar to receive some help. That was not there four or five years ago. And there's that progress. But the, one of the biggest problems is, and aid agencies are telling us, is that they, they, they cannot get to one million right. people. In, in areas that are still under al-Shabaab control, all these conflict. And that, that number is big, and they're looking ways to reach these people. And even in government control area, it's really hard to get these convoys of aid or food to, to people because of, because of so many government checkpoints, because of insecurity, of course, because they're not only looking right. for and the security al-Shabaab has also has contributed in some ways. So it's making it difficult even government control right. areas to provide this assistance quickly. Abdulaziz, I, I just want you to weigh in on, on the recent uh, uh, withdrawal by the U.S. Uh, from the Paris Accord. I mean, droughts are typically blamed on, on climate change these days. What are your thoughts on, on President Trump's decision to pull out of Paris? Well, in, because the way I'm weighing in, because it's the perspective from the Somalis that I have seen uh, in Somalia back in uh, March, who are actually saying that they haven't seen this drought for many years. I've met an so, a, 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 a 80-year-old man who said he has never I, seen anything like this in so his I, life. So I'm out of time. So you think it's a bad thing? It is a bad thing, Okay. Yes. I, I thank you, Abdulaziz and, and Mohammed, for your report. We're taking another quick break now, but when we come back... We'll talk about that. The U.S. backs out of the Paris climate deal. What will it mean for the U.S. economy and for the planet? But first, a reminder, we want to hear from you. Share your thoughts, questions, and comments on our Facebook page. The address is VOA The Correspondence. We'll be right back. <laughs> 